Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be talking about file systems once again. And yeah, we'll benchmark them and we're going to look at a new one as well. Stay tuned right after this. So the last time I did this, I looked at ext4, I looked at butterfs, I looked at f2fs, xfs, but uh, that was it. I'm not going to look at f2fs again. I just didn't think it was all that great. It was, it didn't offer me anything that isn't in the, the other file systems now. That is a file system that was made and built by Samsung for handling SSDs. Today I am going to be looking at OpenZFS, and we'll add that into the mix. And we'll talk about some of the other things that I'm going to do too. So ButterFS, as you know, is a file system that has been gaining a lot of interest in the Linux community of late. It started out in 2007 as a project by Oracle. They built the file system for Linux. That's what they did it for. They did mark it as stable in 2013. They put it out there. A bunch of people used it, didn't work, it blew up, caused all kinds of problems and data loss. And they didn't retract it. They just kind of left it out there and then they patched it, tried again, no, it's still broken. Patched it, tried again, still broken. It was, to be honest, it is kind of sad, but uh, it was a kind of a laughing stock for a long time in the Linux community. People say, you're going to run a ButterFS? And people would laugh. But... Um, it does offer some intriguing features. It offers copy on write. It has pooling and snapshots, checksums. It has multi-device spanning, although the way ButterFS does multi-device spanning is the weirdest file system layout I have ever seen in my entire life, and I have seen some weird ones. If you want more about it, Anantech has a really good article on ButterFS that goes through all the sort of details about the weirdness behind their multi-device spanning and, and their multi-device support. Um, if you're using RAID 0, RAID 1, or RAID 10, it works great. Um, RAID 5 and RAID 6 native to ButterFS has an issue. And it still has an issue as of the build for Linux kernel 5.16. If you go out to their project site, and I'll put a link in the description below, you can see that the devs have still marked it as unstable. Now, if, to me, if a developer says it's unstable, that generally means if you're going to try to put this in production workloads, it's your fault if it blows up and you lose data. Because you've been warned, you've been told. The problem is, is there is a, a write wormhole that occurs during a, a power off or a loss of power for either the device or the machine that's hosting the RAID. If that happens and there just happens to be a write in progress, you could lose the integrity of the RAID. So that's not a good situation to have, particularly with production workloads and large file systems. If the devs tell you not to do something, you probably ought to listen to them. Uh, ext4 is the default journaling file system for Linux distributions. It was originally written to support Luster. Uh, I think Cluster File System, Cluster File Systems, which was the company originally associated with Luster, I believe they're the ones that started the initial development on EXT. Uh, and then, of course, EXT has evolved from 2 to 3 to 4, which is where it is today. And, of course, we all know EXT4 is usually the default file system on most distributions. Not all, but most. Uh, and it also supports uh, metadata checksumming, which was originally in Luster before they had metadata servers was the place they stored metadata. In fact, you can still use ext4 in Gluster. Gluster doesn't have a metadata server. You can use ext4 in Gluster, although I think the metadata is a little bit limited. There's some limitations in it because of the size uh, in which you can store things. XFS, of course, is next. And that is a high-performance 64-bit journaling file system. It was designed by SGI for their IRIX uh, Unix like operating system that powered their 3D rendering engines uh, and also high performance computing engines. It XFS was designed for large files and having many people go after it. So it has two very good things. It handles large files and it handles parallel I.O. very well. 
it is also journaling. And journaling, unlike EXT, EXT4, you can turn journaling off. XFS, you cannot. But XFS, you can redirect the journal to another drive if you want. OpenZFS is a 128-bit file system, and it comes with a logical file manager to allow you to do setup and uh, expansion, setting options, what, and what have you. But uh, OpenZFS is a it supports replication, compression, encryption, snapshots, uh, and and some rudimentary I'm saying rudimentary data protection. Uh, and some call ZFS copy on write. That is incorrect. Oracle doesn't has never referred to ZFS as copy on write. It's redirected on write, and there's a difference in the way the two work. If you want to find out more about it, go over to Oracle and read their ZFS documentation and how it works. Uh, all tests that I conducted are on hardware today. I'm going to be using an AMD Ryzen 3700 with 32 gig of RAM. I'm using a Samsung 970 Evo. That's a 500 gigabyte uh, NVMe. I'm running on PCIe 3. So I'm not running any of the newer ones um, that are on PCIe 4. So yeah, that machine just doesn't have PCIe 4. I'm running Debian 11. That's just what that machine runs. And I have no reason to change the operating system, even though it may or may not have the backport patches for ButterFS. But, you know, I am not testing RAID, so it's not important to me. Uh, OpenZFS defaults were used, so there's no compression and no encryption involved in it. So ButterFS, same thing. Use the defaults uh, for this benchmark. XFS, same thing. EXT, I did use the defaults as a journaling file system, and I also could fit, made another pass where I turned the journaling off just to see what the differences in performance would be. Read. Uh, as you can see, ZFS does quite well in this particular benchmark. You'll see that there's some erratic behavior there with particularly the three and four uh, worker loads. This benchmark is an IO zone benchmark. I've used it before. The methodology is published in their manuals for IO zone. Uh, the, work, the worker load is simulating concurrent users. So this would be one, one user, then two concurrent, then three, four, and five as you ramp up. What you're looking for is erratic behavior like what you're seeing in ZFS. It usually indicates some kind of configuration issue. You might see it roll off. That could be a memory or a buffering issue. Uh, or it could be that maybe the file system is just not keeping up and your drive isn't fast enough for the amount of I.O. That's, sw that's swamping it. So, But in that case, that doesn't indicate anything other than a, perhaps a configuration issue because it's erratic. Uh, and the rest of them are are down quite a bit slower um, than ZFS is. You might ask, wait a minute, that's faster than the drive. And you'd be right, it is. But ZFS does a lot of its work in memory. So that's why it is so quick. Uh, FREAD is a C uh, program, FREAD or uh, a file read. So this would be common to the Unix kernel, also to any of the utilities that come with your machine that are written in C, uh, unless they use something other than standard I.O., uh, and that is possible. Uh, so yeah, it's likely that you would encounter that on C applications. Uh, so yeah, ZFS does not do well in that workload, but XFS, X, EXT with no journaling does well, and the standard EXT does well in that workload as well. You'll notice that ButterFS does not do well in that workload. PREAD is a buffered read. ZFS working good. The rest of them kind of the same with EXT4 last. You're going to hear that over and over again. Uh, FWRITE, again, same behavior. ZFS not doing too well, although it is more of a ramp up. So the issue probably is a configuration issue with the read. Uh, so yeah, the writes seem to work. Oh, I mean, they're scaling up good. They're just not scaling out very well. XFS is doing good. EXT No Journal is, is doing a little bit less, but ButterFS does pretty well here. And EXT4, again, dead last. But, you know, you are this is where the journaling is coming into play. Um, as far as uh, PWrite, you'll see that again here with ZFS performing erratically. Uh, I would consider that mm, probably not erratic. It's probably rolling off because you don't see a spike on any of the workloads that are heavier. You see a gradual roll-off after, after you get past three. 
XFS is not as performant as EXT. No journaling is in this particular workload, but EXT is gradually rolling off, whereas XFS is gradually rolling up. Yeah, so it's gradually scaling up. But RFS does quite well in this workload. I wouldn't say that is poor. It's doing as well as XFS seems to be doing. Uh, it's close anyway. EXT4, dead last. Reread, and this is, a, is rereading the same area of the disk or the file. And ZFS does well in those workloads. Uh, EXT no journal does as well, although you'll notice there's a hitch in the worker two. But RFS, it, it, ran, it scales up, but not to the extent XFS and EXT4 are. And EXT4 with journaling, dead, dead last. This is the rewrite. So this is rewriting an area of the file over and over again. Now, you see the erratic behavior is back, but to a lesser degree on the ZFS. But it, overall, the performance is good. Again, there's probably pressure from memory. EXT4, no journaling. It's pretty stable above three users, two users. Yeah, it's pretty stable. But RFS is doing pretty well here. It's, it's comparable to XFS and EXT4 dead last. Uh, random reads, this is randomly reading a file. I guess the only thing else to say here is that I think EXT4 no journaling is performing slightly better than XFS. But RFS has some issues uh, ramping up. You notice on the smaller workloads, like a single user workstation, it is not performant very well. It, it isn't as, even as performant as EXT4 is. XFS on stride read, now that's, that's reading an area of, of the file, jumping ahead, reading another area, jumping ahead. Now that could be random. Uh, it doesn't have to be the same blocks. It could be random. That would be indicative of a database doing a SQL search. We're kind of seeing the same behavior in XFS and EXT. They look close to me. They're, I mean, there's a slight difference in the scale up. Uh, EXT with no, 4 with no journaling seems to scale up faster, but we still have that hitch at workload 2. ButterFS is scaling up, but again, doesn't perform as well on the, slow, on the smaller workload. Random writes. Uh, ZFS is doing well here, and, but it's rolling off pretty quickly. X, and uh, XFS... It's a little bit slower than EXT4, and I think EXT4 is actually ramping down. But it's ramping down to the same point where ButterFS is ramping up, and then EXT4, dead last. Um, reverse read, this typically you'll find this in compilers, particularly multi-pass compilers, where they'll do this. And that's reading the file backwards. You'll find, uh, in this case, the FS is doing quite well. EXT is doing great. Uh, for this workload, although it, again, it, it is, it's reached its peak at around three users. It don't seem to gain anything beyond that. So that could be, it's just, that's as fast as it can go. XFS, it's climbing up a little bit and then it stops. ButterFS starts out slow, climbs up, but not as well as XFS or EXT. And of course, EXT journaling again, dead last. Initial write, this is creating a file on disk for the first time. ZFS, again, is doing quite well here. It, it rolls off very quickly, but you'll notice that ZFS does well even on single user workloads. EXT4 does quite well. ButterFS does quite well here. XFS not as well, and EXT4 dead last. So I wanted a mixed workload here um, is also part of the. There's 13 different simulations that IOZone can do, all 13 of them. I would have to say... XFS and ButterFS are running pretty close together. Uh, EXT4 no journaling definitely has an advantage on the lower workloads, on the smaller workloads. EXT4 again, but dead last. As far as the geometric mean is concerned, this is kind of bringing all the results together and then deciding, you know, who wins, <laughs> who had the best overall performance. And ZFS, no question. XFS. EXT4, I would say they're close, and eh, maybe not close enough for you, but they're close to me. EXT4, dead last, no question about that. And, and ButterFS would be second from the bottom. And that's the way it, it runs out. So ZFS, what do we conclude? Does, it's the fastest in every every test except for F read and F write. That should be F write. 
EXT4, slowest in every file system test except for FREAD, and that should be FREAD there as well. EXT, no journal, and XFS, they're close. There's some differences in, in the workloads, but up in the higher workloads, they're pretty close. And then ButterFS, I would say in some cases it's good, some cases it's not so good. Uh, it does not seem to handle smaller workloads. So if you're putting this on your workstation, you're probably having, you're probably going to see poorer performance than you would using one of the standard uh, file systems. It's just not as fast as ZFS. It's not as fast as ext4 with no journaling, and it's not as fast as XFS. Which the file system is best? I would say, I mean, this is just my opinion. Uh, ZFS would be a good choice for non-root file systems. I, don't, I wouldn't recommend it for your root file system, however, because of the, you're going to encounter F reads and F writes, and then that's not where it excels. There are better choices for that. For NVMe to prevent wear leveling, I, I don't know if I can really say this is a recommendation, but it's a choice, right? That you could turn journaling off, and that would save your SSD some write, some lifetime. So... As far as XFS, it's a good all-around file system. As far as trim support, I mean, EXT has had trim support for some time. XFS has it as well, but you might want to check and see if your device supports FS trim to make sure that, that, it, will, that it will preserve. Otherwise, if you can't find that, you can run trim manually. There are utilities in XFS that allow you to do that. ButterFS is kind of a buzzword. We've said that before. It's kind of the shiny object that everybody's running around with thinking it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. However, in the tests, I would say it does not have the performance level that the older file systems have in Linux workloads and workloads that you would encounter in small business medium business and even enterprise workloads. RAID 5 and 6, there is a code, there is an issue that is being addressed. Root file systems, what do I do use? I use uh, ext4 on x86 platforms. I just do it for convenience. I know that it's not the most performant, but it works well enough for me in most cases. Now I do leave journaling turned on, even though I know I probably shouldn't. If for my workstation here, for this workstation behind me, that is XFS. Uh, that's running XFS on that one. Root file systems on ARM. I use XFS because they're limited memory. Gluster wants to use XFS for its default file system. I use ZFS for everything else. Uh, I use ZFS for my RAID. I use it for my NAS. I use it uh, to store videos. I use it to playback videos and edit them. I use it for uh, everything. And I do run ZFS RAIDs. As for ButterFS, yeah, I, I've tried it recently. Yeah, so don't accuse me of not having used it since 2013. I have. I've tried it. Uh, it just doesn't have any place in my workflow because of the performance. The boss that I worked for, he was he was old school, old school engineer. I mean, he had, uh, he had worked on systems that um, back in the 50s, 60s, and on up. And uh, he, if you came to him with a new idea, he would listen to you. And he would uh, entertain it, but he would never implement it until you had proof of that your idea was faster. So if you wanted him to say, yeah, okay, you've got, you got some budget to go and do that, that's, that's all well and good. But if you went to him with an idea and you had no data, he would, he would say, well, that's nice. Come back when you have an answer to my question, does this improve in performance? Because if you didn't have proof, he wouldn't accept it. He would always say that opinions are worth nothing in this business. If you can't prove that your idea works, don't bother me with it. And that's the way it was. And that's the way I'm leaving this today. Uh, if you if you hear people say that ButterFS is the fastest file system, um, you might want to check that benchmark and see how they're measuring it. Hope to see you all again very soon, and bye for now.